Hi there and welcome to Transcona Trailer Sales. Today I'm going to be walking you through your 2023 Forest River Palomino 163H. We're just going to start off at the back of the unit. If you do notice, you do got an op you are pre-wired for an observation camera right up top there. You can contact your parts department if you'd like to get set up with that. You have your spare tire at the back here. Right below that spare tire, you do have a propane quick mix in case you want to get your barbecue set up for that. You can contact your parts department about getting the proper end so that you can connect it to your barbecue. It does just work as simple as having this valve close like so. Pull the collar back like an airline, push in the other end, and then it locks into place. Open up your flow of propane, and it would be propane flowing to the barbecue, but you do have to purchase the hose and connector to be able to do so. Always making sure you put your dust cap back on whenever you're done using it. You also have your spare tire, and then you do have your hybrid bed back here. This bed's gonna work the same way as the front bed. I'll just show you this one. Lift that open. Slide that handle out of the way, come to the other side and you do the same thing. But at this point, just being careful because that is gonna to wanna to come down now. There's nothing assisting it. So just holding it while it comes down. Coming to the left of the unit. In all four corners of the unit, you've got stabilizer jacks. The way those works is you're gonna take the drive, the drive tool, which is inside the front compartment, hook it up to this drive nut, run that foot down to the ground. Once that foot contacts the ground, just giving it another eight quarter turn just to snug it up and it's gonna take any bounce or sway you see we have in the unit right now away. Inside this back bumper, pulling this cap off, you do get your sewer hose. Once fully extended, it is about 20 feet long. In this back corner, you got your main 50 amp power cord in there. Just taking note of this silver strip here, it lines up with this silver strip there. You're just pushing that into place. Eighth turn to lock it in. Then you got that threaded collar to really lock it down. If you follow that cord back, you do have your standard 50 amp plug-in. Now a lot of campsites may not have this. So we do include this 30 amp dog bone adapter. Just keep it in mind you're going down to 30 amps of power. And if you were to want to go further from that, if you're at home and you want to run your fridge and your lights, we do include a 15 amp park adapter as well. Just keep in mind whenever you do use that 15 amp park adapter, you're not going to be running anything like an air conditioner or your microwave on that. You got your cable satellite inlets right here. You do have solar hookup as well located right here. So if you were to want to get one of those portable panels, you could do so. You can contact our parts department and they can get you a quote for that again. You got your black tank flush right in the corner here. The way that works is with your black tank open, with your black tank open and the sewer hose connected, you can thread your garden hose in on here, turn it on, and that's just gonna flush that tank out, getting rid of any false monitor panel readings. It also help just keeping it that little bit cleaner and keep the odor down. Bringing us to our sewer outlet. We're just taking that cap, counterclockwise, we'll take it off. It's the same ears that was on your sewer hose. They just line up like so, lock into place. You're always gonna to wanna to empty your black tank first since it's your dirtiest water filled from your toilets. And then you can follow behind that with your gray valve, which is typically a little cleaner water coming from your sinks and your shower. You have a fridge service port, not much you have to worry about there. You do have this furnace exhaust. Whenever the furnace is running, this is gonna be blowing out hot air. So just be mindful of that. You do have a silver 751 key, which should come included with the unit. You're just sticking it inside that keyhole opening that up gives you access to your exterior shower which has hot and cold water right down below you're going to notice you do have your fresh water drain that works pretty simple you just crack that valve open and it's going to start draining all the water that's inside the fresh tank you got your city water connection right here so if you're out of sight with service you just thread a garden hose in there turn it on it's going to pressurize all your lines without the needing to run your water pump but if you're out boondocking or you just don't have a site with water you could fill up your fresh tank just by putting a garden hose in there and turning it on. It's gonna fill that fresh tank. Inside here is your storage compartment along with your battery disconnect, with your battery disconnect switch on the on position like so, the batteries become connected to the unit. With the battery disconnect switch off, the batteries will become disconnected from the unit. This is that tool I told you about earlier for the stabilizer jacks. You're just gonna hook that up to there to like so, and it'll allow you to run that foot up or down Coming to the front of the unit, you do have another hybrid right up front, but I'm gonna show you the rear one, and it works the same way. You got your battery box right up front here, and then, of course, your propane tank cover. Most of the time, you can just loosen these knobs off, pull this cover back, and it'll give you access to everything you need to do. Instead of video, I'll just take it right off. 
you got two tanks with the selector valve here with the selector valve pointed this way you're gonna be drawing off this tank and it's just simple just turning that just like a barbecue counterclockwise opens up the flow of propane to the unit around the front here you do got your power tongue jack the power tongue jack is only going to work with the battery disconnect switch on so if you do have the battery disconnect switch off the tongue jack is not going to operate turn that switch on it turns on a little light down below in case you're hooking up at night then you got extend and retract on the left side of the unit again the storage compartment on the other side that 15 amp park adapter i showed you earlier as long as that along with that 25 foot water hose inside here is just a service port for your hot water heater whenever you first get to your campsite you are just going to want to give that pressure relief valve a pull and there should be a shot of water that comes out of there we do currently have the tank drained for the customer to pick up and that's why there's no shot of water coming out but a shot of water would be telling you that you're safe to fire it up you do have a i'm going to go over a reset procedure inside the button i'm going to refer to is right here and then right down below just an inch and an eighth socket would take that off and that's just going to drain the complete hot water tank another cable satellite outlet in case you wanted to run a tv outside as well as two 110 plugins and then right down below you notice right at the floor here you do have your low point drains let's say you're leaving the unit for a while you don't want the water going stale or stagnant inside the lines cracking these guys open would just drain all the water that's inside the lines same goes for if you're ever servicing a faucet inside just cracking these guys open will cause less of a mess when you undo those lines you got your two exterior speakers get inside you're just taking that assist handle 49 degrees and it locks into place opening up this door you do have those steps you're taking pulling that blue handle or we'll lock those steps and allow the steps to fold down take a note of these two tabs here pushing that tab in will allow you to just adjust those feet to your tap tight buttons step on inside first thing you notice off on your right you do got your fire extinguisher that's going to be simple pull the pin and shoot on the left here is going to be that bed that we undid for you on the other side this bed's going to work the same way as the front bed you're just taking those travel straps and undoing them always making sure you do do them up when you're traveling right up top in this cupboard here you're going to have this you could just pull that out like so it's going to allow to lock it into place <coughs> just clicking that into place wherever you need to do so you're gonna have a metal pull right on the other side of this mattress you can kind of push it up you're gonna have that little black plastic piece just pushing that pull into that plastic piece and then just pushing the whole bed out and then that'll allow you to lock this into that roof spot there and you have the bed all opened up and then you just take your mattress and fold it out and your bed is made and ready to sleep in you do have an outlet inside here as well as a little light nice shade a nice privacy curtain as well as some storage down below as well Right over here is going to be the main monitor panel system. So you do have your awning control. Hitting that button up will allow that awning to extend out. You're going to let awnings fully extended when you see the back of the metal tube and the little flap hang down. There you go, you got that little flap hanging down and then you see the back of the metal tube. Now, if it were to start raining, you can take any arm front or rear, just pull down on it like so, and that's gonna change the pitch of the awning head, allowing water to then run off. Now, if you like that angle better, you can do the same thing with the front arm and it'll allow for more shade underneath. Just always making sure you do push that arm back to straight whenever you bring it in. 
and you're gonna notice on your right, you do have an awning one light. Turning that on, does turn on those nice lights on either side. And then you can hit retract, which is down, and that'll bring that awning in. As you can see today, it is pretty windy. So a day like today where you're getting about five to 10 kilometer an hour winds, you are gonna wanna make sure you bring that awning in. That way you don't run the risk of bending or ripping, bending your arms or ripping your fabric. You got your living room light switch on the left, which turns on all the living space lights. And then you got your water pump switch, which turns on your water pump, which draws out of your fresh tank. And then you have your water heater switch, which turning that on puts on that DSI fault light. The water heater is going to try lighting three times. If on the third try it doesn't light, this DSI fault light is going to stay on. At that point, you do just have to turn that switch off. Go hit that reset button I showed you earlier and then turn the switch back on and it'll try relighting itself. And then you do just have your monitor panel system, which goes, if you hit that battery, it's gonna show 11.2, 11.7 or 12.3, which should be charging. And then you got your, your black, your fresh and your gray one, which will go empty a thirds, two thirds and full. You don't have an auxiliary tank or a gray two. In the kitchen space, you have your sink with hot and cold water. Inside this binder is where you're going to find all your keys and your manuals for everything. You got some storage space all down below. Up top, you do have a radio. That's going to be just like home, minus the fact of having zone A and zone B. Zone B is going to be your exterior speakers, and zone A is going to be your uh, interior speakers. Power button. You got your microwave, which is just like home, and then you have your overhead fan and light. Whenever you are running this oven, uh, stove or oven, it is recommended to run that fan. That way you make sure that you uh, evacuate those fumes out of the air because both the furnace and the stove both run off propane. Propane's heavier than air. This unit is equipped with an LP detector right down below underneath this uh, bunks. Oh, sorry, it is right below the stove here. If this guy starts going off. You are just going to want to turn off the main supply of propane at the front of the unit. Open up some windows and ventilate it out a little bit. To get the stove to light, you are just turning that knob over to high, hitting the sparker, and it fires right on up. We did have the propane system running earlier, so it does fire right on up. But if you have the propane system off for a while, it allows air to get into the system. So just giving it a second to allow itself, allow it to purge, especially when it comes to lighting the oven. Sometimes it does take a few minutes. So if it doesn't work right away, don't panic, just keep trying. And there you go, you get that pilot light for the oven and then you turn it up to your desired temperature and it fires right on up. And then this little switch on the far right turns on some knob lights in your oven light. The cover for the stove is glass. So just being mindful that you always let your stove cool down before you flop that down and just being gentle with it. Right here is where you're gonna have your TV backer where you can mount a TV. You do have a cable satellite inlet. This little button here, turning this on, turns that red light on. That turns on the antenna on the roof. That's also gonna improve your radio frequency. Inside here is just some storage space. You got the front bed sections, which, which is gonna work the same way as the back bed section. And you have that same pole up on top there. Right here, this is flopped down into a bed right now, but it is just, you can turn it into a dinette just by moving these cushions around. It'll allow you to put everything back into place. You can lift up this table, put those legs underneath, and you can have a dinette again, or you can run it the way it is now. It's a bed. The couch also turns into a bed as well. So you're just having to pick up the foot of that couch and allow itself to fold out. And then to get it back in, you're just doing the opposite movement. Down below is some storage space. Your furnace is gonna move all its air through these floor portals you see we have around the unit. And the AC is gonna dump all its air out of this space here. And you have these louvers. If you leave these louvers open, it's called the quick cool down. It's gonna cool down this main living space as fast as possible. Closing them, it'll move, start moving the air throughout the floor, uh, the ceiling ducting we have throughout the unit. When you got your fridge, opening it up. 
you'll notice right down below here, you do have this little white fin. The further you move this white uh, plastic piece up the metal fin, the colder the fridge is going to get. And then right up top, you got your controls, push that power button down, turns it on. With it flush the way it is, it's going to run on auto, so it's going to first search for shore power. Once shore power is taken away, it'll switch over to gas. Or you can run it solely on gas just by depressing the button. On the wall here, you have your thermostat. Works pretty simple. Hitting that button once, you're going to get into fan. The fan mode, now that's just moving air around with the air conditioner, no cooling involved. At any point in time, pushing the fan button goes from low fan to high fan. One more time, we'll bring you into cool, so now the air conditioning effect takes into place. And with it on auto fan, it becomes an on-demand on system, so depending on what the thermostat's set to, the air conditioner will kick in and out as needed, but you can change that just by the press of the pressing the button twice and it'll go fan on so it'll run full time on the high fan or full time on the low fan. And then at any point in time pushing the temperature up or down to change the temperature. Hitting that button one more time puts you into furnace. That's going to fire up your furnace. The furnace. Whenever you do turn the furnace off after you had it fired up, it's going to run for another three minutes just to allow itself to cool down just for an added safety measure. One thing I forgot to mention on this side here is just gonna be your fire exit. The way that works is you're just taking those red tabs and pulling them up and that'll allow you to push that window, pushing that window out of place. And then to bring it back in, just pulling that down, locking these back into place, we'll lock that window back in. And then last but not least, we get inside the bathroom. You got your toilet flusher on the right. You got a shower with hot and cold water, as well as that sink. And then right down below here, you just got your main fuse and breaker panel. Whenever a breaker trips, it's gonna sit in the middle. So you do just have to turn it off and then back on again to reset it. And whenever you have a fuse trip, there's gonna be a little red indicator light telling you which one's tripped. That's going to be it for this unit here. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call.